welcome to our discussion. We are going to talk about the nominations, the Oscar nominations that have just released this week. Um, our first discussion is going to be on the Best Picture. So, just as a rundown of the list of Best Picture films that were nominated, we have Ford v. Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. So, uh, not all of us have seen all of these movies, but yeah. we're going to talk about them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what do you guys think? What are your... Um, like? hopes or predictions or personal favorites to win best picture predictions i mean a huge contender is joker because it's not just a film at this point it's like a media sensation uh everyone seems like they've watched it everyone and their grandmothers have watched it yeah i think that there was a very interesting thing that happened with joker where it was like it was more than just the film but also like a cultural it became yeah moment like, for good or for bad for some people, um, I think that that kind of... For me, earlier in in that year when that was all going down, I had some suspicions that because of what was going on around the film, culturally, it wouldn't even get recognized by the Oscars. So I'm glad to see it on the list. Can you go into that? Like, what do you mean? Just because there was some... There was a lot of... Um, before the film came out, there was a lot of uh, apprehension that this was going to be a film that was glorifying gun violence. And because of that, there there was it seemed like it seemed like there was a there was a an attitude building around it that was kind of yeah. like don't see this movie. It's kind of it's too dangerous. It's too um they're talking about <clears throat> things that really shouldn't be talked about. So you think because of that it like it was gonna the Oscars were gonna avoid it. Okay, I see. You thought it was controversial. Yeah, I thought that the the controversy would kind of work against it um but it seemed yeah. like it, that's not the they case. handled it really well in like promo interviews and things like that even after the fact they like made sure to i guess go against those claims that mm. it and qualifies yeah that and when the film <laughs> finally came out it actually was great <laughs> and people yeah. enjoyed it and then people were really yeah. strong performances i think that was the best part and then it had really that overarching dread that you heard from this like the sound mm -hmm. and even just the dreariness of just the images too right. kind of all so led to that from somebody who's a, a noob at oscars like i don't know much too much about it mm -hmm. like what is the criteria for winning like best picture it's, it, it depends because yeah. the academy is full of filmmakers like directors people in sound design, people that do camera work, and it's a very select group, and they vote. So it, it is like a personal choice. Art is subjective. Mm -hmm. So everyone has their own personal criteria. You know, that's why mm -hmm. you never know, and that's why they do have campaigns to do advertisements and things like, oh, for your consideration, so that you know those voters can kind of keep films in mind to vote for. Right, gotcha. and I think for... I mean, a lot of people have different thoughts on the Oscars and awards shows, but I, I see it more as just like a fun thing to, mm -hmm. to be involved with. I don't necessarily take it too seriously just because there's yeah. a lot of subjectivity, mm -hmm. especially that goes yeah. into it. Yeah, and definitely. The subjectivity is, of course, a reflection of the types of people who are in right. the yeah. Oscar right. committee. And while there are a lot of people, there are also a lot of the same types of people. <laughs> so yeah. that kind of limits the... Um, Films that will get nominated many times. Um, you don't necessarily see a lot of films by uh, that involve a lot of people of color all the time. You will see them every now and then, but mm. it's not necessarily as, as right. As so I suppose I was asking, like, I know there are other awards like Best Actor and Best like um, Music and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Or Best Score, but for you Best mean Awards categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Best oh. Picture is that a, a category or is it just? It's, it's a category. It's a category. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. in the Oscars. Right. So, so I, I guess I, what I was trying to ask is because like I, I can understand how Best Actor or Best um, Score would be picked because you know they're they're judging it off of that one element of that uh -huh. movie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so my question is sort of like for Best Picture, what are they? They're is judging it like it overall or it's, yeah, it's overall. Overall. So it's just like <clears throat> out of all the movies that came out, which of them is considered the best okay yeah, so okay that makes sense yeah, yeah. okay yeah I, I think that's another, tough then i don't know it is, it's i don't tough. know how you would yeah, yeah it's, it's tough to win it's tough uh to to pick i'm sure but yeah it's it it's a it makes for a fun time if if you're into if you're super interested in it 
But I yeah, I think another mm -hmm. contender that can be in the best picture is 1917. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. think the reason why I'm thinking that it also has a chance with Joker is just that with the Oscars, you know, back to what we're saying, that it's about a bunch of directors and people behind the scenes. Most of the times, these people are very old. I see. So, <laughs> therefore, a lot of award movies, that's why they're always nominated. That's, that's a good brings, point. Yeah, I, the demographic, point. it seems like, is like some old white dudes yeah. are the voters. So. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, but I don't want to take anything away from 1917 because it is a brilliant movie. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a good point to address that that's also the kind of movie that will likely win the Oscar yeah. <laughs> just yeah. because of the kind of voting block is that's voting on it maybe that the winner will rep represent the demographic that voted for it but 1917 i think that's a good mention um everyone just raves about how it looks like one continuous shot and if you see any videos about how they made the film those are always really intense mm -hmm. to watch and mm -hmm. it's great this kind of filmmaking is very rare and i appreciate it all the hard work that goes into it i think it like was that. very unique like we watched it yesterday mm -hmm. um Wow. That was your second time, OC. Wow. Yeah. 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 But it was my first time. Yeah. Me too. And I thought it was one of the most unique movies I've ever seen, just because just of that continuous shot. It just, it was super immersive. Like after I left the theater mm -hmm. and was uh -huh. just like doing my own thing, I was like, dang, I just yeah. feel like I'm still in that movie. <laughs> and it, had, it was immersive and it had really striking visuals too. Like, I think, um, in the words of Shia LaBeouf, art is anything that moves you. Mm -hmm. And I think. Personally, yeah. if I had to vote for these films, you know, that's my criteria. Anything that made me feel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think one that I have to mention, it's one. Of, it's like my favorite, I think, in this category, and I love it, is Parasite. Mm. I think it would be great if um, the team that made Parasite, you know, would be up there and got Best Picture. I um, I legitimately <laughs> believe that Parasite is the best movie. It deserves. <laughs> so, yeah. or, it deserves all the recognition. Uh, is in it? 2019, yeah, 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 yeah. That Parasite was for sure the best movie, in my opinion, for me, uh, that I saw that year. And I had a lot of, like, I had a lot of thoughts about it. it like, even immediately walking out, I wasn't even sure if I liked the movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's, it's, it's just, like, it's one of those things where I just kept thinking about that movie. And, yeah. and kept thinking about it. And so, whenever a movie, like... Does that to you? Does that to me, it's, it's definitely... Significant, and so like a couple of years ago, I don't know if you guys saw Ex Machina yes. came out. Uh -huh. That was one of those movies that like made me continuously think about it, and I was like, mm. okay, if I'm thinking about it this much, and I'm just ruminating on it, and like all the themes and all of the the potential messages, then this is for me the best film. It that moved made, you. Made me do that. <laughs> it yeah. moved you. Um, I think I want to mention too that 1917 got the Golden Globe for Best Picture. Mm. So it has that for it. I think the voters are going to keep that in mind too. They're going to watch it because of that and heavily consider it. Um, and then also when we said Joker is was a media sensation. I think we just mentioned the three that I think are like the media sensations. 1917 has so much buzz. Parasite is, it reminds me of Joker because Joker has like the Joker stairs that everyone keeps visiting. Parasite, a lot of people have visited the site where they ran also down the stairs in that um, mm. really incredible oh, right, scene right, right. when it was raining. Yeah. Um, and those ones had a lot of buzz too. Yeah. I feel like we mentioned some good ones. Yeah, what about all the other ones? Like Marriage Story, Irish Man, Ford versus Ferrari, Once Upon a Time Hollywood. So I have I very much enjoyed Ford v Ferrari. It was fun. Like it was a very like guy movie. <laughs> like it was a very like brotherly love type movie, mm -hmm. which I appreciated seeing. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's the best for me, but it's it was fun. It was a fun time at the movies. Irishman. It was kind of a drag to get through, but it was like it was a positive drag. Because I enjoyed yeah. it. It was it was like watching old people do old people things. But it was cool, I guess. I feel like if you're a fan of the slow build, The Irishman and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, they both make use of that and come to very like satisfying endings, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and then you mentioned Ford B. Ferrari. I think the standout in that for me was Christian Bale's performance. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Everything else, it was a fun movie, but Christian Bale was a standout for me mm -hmm. in that one. So, yeah. and then also I watched Marriage Story. Same with me. That one, I think the strong point is also the performances. Yeah, really the performances strong, strong, understated, moving performances, especially Adam Driver. Yeah, yeah. 
I think that too. I think see, Marriage Story, although like again, strong performances and unique story, I don't really. That to me is the least likely to win, just because I just don't feel like it's like overall like mm-hmm. an amazing movie. But I think again, the story was very unique. It really talked to it talked in terms of our time of like marriage because we don't really bring up divorce, yeah. but it's always kind of hinted, you know. So I'm glad they actually went with that. And then again, Adam Driver was just yeah. outstanding You're for right. me in that one. It's a very know? interesting look at modern love because to me my takeaway is was that if something ends it's not always a failure Mm -hmm. and i think even though it was sad it was a positive ending that that moved me yeah and then before we uh get off this topic i'll also mention jojo rabbit um taiko atiti his direction of that movie was brilliant in my opinion like just i love him the way that like imagine taking the concept of a little kid in nazi germany whose imaginary friend is adolf hitler (laughs) and making that okay true it's a wild concept in 2019 (laughs) it's it was it was interesting for sure and so it helped that he was jewish so he was like i can do this honestly (laughs) honestly i didn't even know he was jewish until after the movie like after i saw the movie i didn't even know i was just like wow this it it was literally just the skill mm -hmm. of how he executed that whole movie just made it work for me and i think that the yeah and he was he also played adolf hitler which was which was great <laughs> yeah it wasn't crass it felt very heartfelt what, and yeah. he was like disclaimer i'm jewish you know <laughs> i can do this i think that the one of the things that i really i was thinking about it recently one of the things that i really liked about taika watiti's direction in this movie was the fact that he's he's the kind of director who he can take something serious and make it a joke, mm. which is what he was able to do with Nazi Germany and, and Hitler. And it worked. It doesn't work if in other situations for me personally when he's doing that with Thor, <laughs> where <laughs> Thor's you know ancestral home of Asgard is destroyed and everyone is laughing because they made a joke in that same moment. But in this movie where it's like the point is to satirize this, um, this idealized figure... And to take this this person who has been so so um he's he's been very yeah 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 yeah. deservedly so (laughs) right but but he's like he's such a big figure and Mm -hmm. to bring him down to this juvenile level and make him small it it really worked and I appreciated that in the direction and the actors were great as well Scarlett Johansson the movie was awesome yeah I mean you're right it is a wild concept and the fact that it didn't become like because it was a serious topic, like you said. Mm-hmm. And it could have very easily maybe been like the interview with Seth Rogen and like oh, taking right. a really right, serious right, right. subject <laughs> and making it a comedy. It could have been trash. But because Taika Waititi is such a careful, heartfelt filmmaker, it came out being really incredible. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then we got Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Anybody want to talk about that? I mean, I did. It's just, like I said, it's a slow build. It is a really cool time piece. It's very reminiscent of the 70s, and there's a lot of nostalgia, I guess, for people that grew up in the 70s. For me personally, it didn't hit me. It's cool to see. Um, I love vintage stuff, so I was into it. But it's not so much one of Quentin Tarantino's like cultural sensation type movies like Kill Bill was. It's a very personal film because it reflects his personal ideas he said before that like directors have a shelf life and that eventually they're just going to be bad this movie kind of reflected those thoughts i think and his insecurities about being an obsolete director eventually um but he's she shows he still has directing chops though with this movie and and made it a fun one at the end with like a really cool ending scenes so Mm -hmm. it's a contender i think and then i think the one we haven't talked about is little women um has anyone seen Little Women? <laughs> I haven't, but I want to. Um, yeah. It's from. This is not a knock to that. I think yeah. we should all watch it. <laughs> yeah, haven't. I mean, yeah, we could all watch it and just be like, you know, everything we said was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Little Women must win. Um, but did anyone see? Because it's from the same director as Lady Bird. Did anyone see that? Dang. No. Cut this out. Cut this part out. We okay. suck. Okay. Well, well, we, 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 we yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, we may, some of us might end up seeing it before, before the, 
um, Oscars come out in February. So we might have a change of perspective. Maybe, maybe not. It's only one film here that none of us have seen. It so. has a great ensemble, great cast. I, I want to see it. 